Don't hate me, don't hate me, don't hate me. We're gonna take bits into 2024 that are good for our mental health. Self-care, self-compassion, manifesting goddess boss. Say it out loud. Hey guys, it's Laurel and it is almost the new year. New Year's resolutions are always such a weird pressure to put on ourselves and I haven't really done them in the past years. Instead, I've decided to take the parts of me that have felt toxic towards myself and towards my self-compassion and leave them behind. I like to call this my what I'm leaving in 2023. Now, if you guys are watching this and it's in the middle of the year or months down the line or weeks down the line and you guys already feel like, oh, well, it's not the new year. I can't make goals for myself. Guys, we can all restart and reset and check in with ourselves at any time of the day, any time of the month, any time of the year, anytime we can reset. But I've been in a really bad funk for almost half of the year. And within the last few weeks, it's gotten really bad again. This has always been a moment for me to really check in with myself and say, hey, these are the things that you're doing that are not kind to you. So let's be kind to you. Let's choose you. I think manifesting is very powerful. And I think that almost anything can be possible for you if you manifest it. All right. What am I leaving in 2023? I am leaving seven day work weeks. I've always been really bad at relaxing, but being an influencer, a content creator, our jobs like never stop. And I am not giving myself enough breaks. It's been hard for me to let myself take breaks because I'm just trying to do so much and spin so many plates at once. And I do think that that is what led to my burnout this past month. I just want to make sure that there's a day or two a week that I am really just not working and I'm just doing me and relaxing and not editing and not posting and not strategy and not emails, <laughs> you know? My second thing on the list kind of goes hand in hand with that because I've been working so much, I've hardly left my house. So I'm also leaving behind too many homebody days, too many rot days in a row. Something about staying home too many days in a row is doing something to my brain chemistry and it's not good. I need to leave my house. I need to see people. I need to interact with people. I need to go out in public. I need to have reasons to dress nice and leave. I love my home. It is my safe space, but I need to go out of my comfort zone more often. 2023 was the year of negative self-talk for me. It got really bad after my birthday and it just got worse and worse and worse. I think it started as jokes, but our brains respond to repetition and not facts. So the more that I kept making self-deprecating jokes, the more I started to believe it. I spent way too much time being unkind to myself this year. I used to be able to just keep that in my head, but it has been outside for you guys to hear, for my live stream viewers to hear, for my friends to hear. And like, I don't wanna hear my friends talk about themselves that way. So why am I subjecting my friends to that too? I don't wanna subject myself to it. That isn't very self-care, self-compassion, manifesting goddess boss, girl bitch of me. I've really been sacrificing my mental health and my time and energy to appease others. No more of that. My interests have changed. I have changed as a person. And so I'm not gonna try to reach for old me to appease others. I need to live in this new me, this new present version of myself and love her and let her enjoy her interests. You know, like I deserve that. I don't ever wanna be anything but genuine with you and myself. I've been dimming my light and not prioritizing the things that I want to do and my desires in order to make other people happy. And what do I preach? Not that, so why am I doing it? So no more. We're not doing that in 2024. This was in my list last year, and for the most part, I've done it, but in the last few months, I have brought it back. I am leaving behind my tendency to punish myself for my disability. Being ADHD just means that I function differently. It doesn't mean I function wrong. And a lot of things that society has told us growing up has made me feel like my disability has been a curse and a life sentence when really I have to work with my disability and not against it. And if I have to take down days and downtime, and if I have to listen to my body on days where I really don't wanna listen to my body, that is okay because I am choosing me and I'm prioritizing my health and my safety and avoiding burnout. 
and there's nothing wrong with that. And there's nothing wrong with me, and there's nothing wrong with anybody else who struggles with stuff like this. And there's no point in punishing myself because I can't control what my body needs and what my brain needs. This was also on one of my past two lists, but with the negative self-talk, it's really brought everything back, guys. Negative self-talk is so bad for you. And I'm sorry that I've subjected y'all to it in videos and live streams. I am leaving behind saying I can't and then just not trying things that I want to. I've been telling myself, I can't learn K-pop dances. I can't do Pilates. I can't. I've been saying I can't a lot. I'm done saying it. I can. I have broken free from some toxic people and things and escaped domestic violence and taught myself to love myself over and over and over again. I can. I fixed two flat tires all by myself with no prior knowledge of how to do that. I can. I've been cleaning and decluttering my house all by myself when it was the worst it's been in a very, very long time. I can. I can. I can and I can and I will and I can. And you can too. We just gotta keep saying it. Say it out loud. Vampire. All right, last thing I'm leaving in 2023. Loving myself conditionally. There's really been so many moments where I've abandoned myself and my love for myself because in that moment I wasn't being productive enough or I wasn't pretty enough or I wasn't performing my best. No, at any moment we are worthy of love. And if we can't love ourselves, then we're really out here setting the precedent for other people to not love us either. So that is my what I'm leaving in 2023 list. But this year I also did a what I'm taking in 2024 because there's habits and practices and like self-care acts that I've lost track of and that were so helpful to me. And I need to pull them out of the depths of hell and bring them back. And 2024 is going to be the year that I choose myself. And this is how we're going to do it. In 2024, I'm bringing back positive talk. What did I say earlier? Our brain responds to repetition, not facts. Lie to yourself, but lie positively. Even if other people don't see things as lies, but you do because your self-worth is in the toilet, just say those things out loud. Say them to yourself in the mirror. I'm beautiful. I'm hot. I'm sexy. I'm a force. I'm talented and I'm interesting. And anybody would be lucky to have me in their life. Say it to yourself. Say it to yourself, scream it at yourself, record yourself saying it on your phone, play it back, just say the good shit. And anytime I wanna say, oh, I'm so stupid for that. No, 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 we catch ourselves and we go, oh, I'm so silly, I'm so silly goofy for that. I'm such a cute little baby girl for that. <clears throat> right? <laughs> like we can make it a bit. We're gonna take bits into 2024 that are good for our mental health. So the new bit is that when we do something silly and goofy, we say it out loud instead of saying something mean to ourselves. In 2024, I am allowing myself to be messy and not perfect. I think there's a lot of things that I stop myself from doing because I don't think I will be able to do them perfectly. So I just don't even start. I want to paint and I want to draw and I want to color and I want to do creative things. But every time I'm like, well, I'm not gonna be as good as so-and-so. I stopped doing cosplay because I was like, I'm never gonna be as good as blah, blah, blah. Well, it's not true, but first try, absolutely not. Because practice makes perfect. You gotta practice. And also not every painting is gonna be a masterpiece. Not every story is going to be a life-changing novel. I just need to chill the fuck out and let myself not be perfect. <laughs> In 2024, we're bringing back romanticizing my life. All right, I used to do it all the damn time. Every day I was posting on my Insta story, romanticizing my life. And some people made me feel like that was performative or masking. And so I thought I was masking, but honestly, I think I was just performing self-care in a way that makes sense for me. I need to romanticize every bit an inch of my life in order to be present. Cause otherwise I'm just gonna be scrolling on social media and comparing myself to others. It works for me, it might not work for you, but I'm bringing it back. I'm taking myself on solo dates and I'm living in the present. Next thing on my list is something I discovered on TikTok, thought audits. Thought audits are, they sound really clinical, but they're really not. Basically it's just like you're catching yourself when your mind wanders. So when my mind is wandering somewhere that I am unconsciously wandering to, I'm trying to click myself back in the present and be like, why do I, why did I think about that? Why am I, why is my mind wandering there? Because our brain is telling us what we desire and what we want to work on. Things for me, I really want to learn K-pop dances, which means I really want to get back into dancing. But then my brain 
is wandering places like, oh, maybe I'm not active enough to be able to keep up now and blah, blah, blah. Well, this is something that I wanna work on. It's clearly something that matters a lot to me because I'm thinking about it all the time. So thought audit, figure out what you're thinking about all the time and make that a priority. I feel like that's such a big form of self-care. And some of those things might be negative self-talk. And if your brain is mindlessly wandering to negative self-talk, you need to remind yourself that you're that bitch. Say that shit out loud and be like, uh-uh, my brain's being dumb, my brain's being rude, and my brain is wrong. Okay, I think we all need to do this, and I'm sorry if I sound like a boomer here. I think we should all bring mindful no-screen time sessions into 2024. Don't hate me, don't hate me, don't hate me. I know like boomers are like, oh, these millennials are always looking at their phones. <laughs> I understand how powerful our phones are and how important they are, but sitting like this all the time, not good for our posture. Comparing ourselves on social media, not good for our brain. And like, what are we gonna do if we can't look at screens? Cause that means no phone, no TV, no computers, right? No tablets. If we take like an hour or two out of our days to be like, hey, no screens, like what are we gonna choose to do? For me, that'd be like, okay, well, I guess I'll take this moment to like clean up the living room a little bit or throw a load of laundry in or put the laundry away that I finished the other day. Or I'll hop on the treadmill, listen to music because I'm not looking at the screen, but I'm listening to music. Like maybe this will be a moment for me to dance around in my fucking living room to some good music. Maybe I'll go for a drive. Maybe I'll go outside and touch some damn grass. Maybe I'll take the dog for a walk. Like these are all things that we should be doing anyways. We might be more productive during those times. It might be better for our brain. Maybe if you take that time right before you go to bed it'll make it easier for you to fall asleep i'm gonna do it a few times a week and see where that leads me and i'll let you guys know how it goes in 2024 i'm gonna be eating breakfast guys it's good for your brain especially if you're prioritizing protein in the morning it's so good for your brain it's good for your metabolism it makes you ready to think and work and get on your feet and do things and also it gets you right out of bed i suck at eating breakfast but i really just want to be a girly pop who takes a moment in the morning to eat breakfast doesn't have to be every day but it has to be at least a few times a week all of these things that I'm bringing into 2024, by the way, take with a grain of salt when it comes to burnout. If I'm burnt out, I'm probably not gonna be able to do half of these things, but I still wanna keep them in mind for when I'm performing my best and when I'm here 100%. Okay, the new viewers might not know about this part of me, but the old viewers remember dance parties. We're bringing them back in 2024, okay? I used to do dance parties when I'd get raided on stream. I used to do them when we'd hit goals. I used to do them every day on my Insta stories. I used to do them not even for you guys, just for myself. Guys, it's almost impossible to be sad when you're dancing around like a fool. I have, I think like two or three times been able to get myself out of a meltdown by dancing around to good music. We're bringing it back. And the last thing on my list, I'm planning ahead for burnout. It's gonna happen. I'm gonna burn out. It's part of me. It's part of my disability. I'm gonna burn out. So now I'm going to work towards having a plan for the next one and the one after that until I've perfected the way to take care of myself when I'm burnt out. And I have some ideas. They're flowing. I'm going to try to make a game plan to plan ahead for burnout. Yeah. <laughs> Let me know if any of this like awoke something in you. Let me know if you have your own list. Put them in the comment section if you feel safe, comfortable doing so. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like my content, if you feel inspired by it, if you enjoy it, if it makes you laugh, consider leaving a like, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button if you wanna get notified when I post new videos and follow me on my other social medias because I'd love to see you here and not just on YouTube. <laughs> Thank you guys for everything. Thank you guys for letting me be human and understanding that I'm never and will never be perfect. And I'm grateful that you're here. Okay, I'm done being sappy. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys very, very soon on the YouTube's late to skaters. Let's take care of ourselves and have a better 2024 together, friends.